What is, in my view, the reason why Curator has achieved so much success out there? I think it has to do with the fact that it warns you, this Offenses tab here, warns you about things that Curator has been, you have not been looking for, but Curator has been correlating things and it's telling you, it's calling your attention. Let's take a look at some of these offenses. So this one, for example, is made upon 6,425 events. So instead of Curator sending you 6,000 alerts or things, it combines them together because they are indexing something that is common to all of them. In this particular case, it's the source IP. It can be username, it can be host name, it can be different things that Curator say, oh, these things are happening within a short period of time of each other, and they have this in common, they might be part of the same thing. And combines them together, and then these rules that we see here, you see, we see process create, process launch from a uh, directory, and we can actually see the details of those rules by going here and do display rules, and we see all these rules, notice that it detected, you know, meta exploit, uh, system tools, uh, you know, all sort of uh, things that are unusual, PowerShell with encoded command, well, things that are, are, you know, PSXX, things that are happening with this particular machine that obviously has been uh, compromised. But Curator not only works with events, it also works with events and flows. We can actually see in this particular offense that there are 8,000 events and 36,000 flows. And flows are the things that allow you to detect, for example, a scanner. If somebody's scanning your uh, internal network, you it's not going to be leaving any, any logs behind that you can get the events from. It actually, from the flows, because Curator detects, well, this, this same IP is pinging different IPs on different ports, well, that's a scanning, and, and it can detect that. And like that, there are very many things that Curator detects by virtue of analyzing that layer 3 traffic of the flows. But it doesn't stop there. It has the capability of detecting stuff that is inside the payload. So for example, this particular uh, offense is only has uh, 20 event and uh, less than 500 flows that basically indicates that, look at, look at the name, there is a file hash of something that went through the network whose hash, uh, file that went through a network whose hash is found in the fishme.com feed. How did Curator connected all these dots? Well, that's a good segue to first talk about the app exchange. So Curator has a bunch of rules and a feed, uh, free feed from the X-Force that populates tables in Curator about, you know, artifacts or indicators of compromise, uh, you know, bad URLs, bad IPs, but also hashes. And what I did to get that uh, piece that I just show you, look at all the names of all the IBM partners and competitors and everybody wants to be here in the App Exchange. Because this, when I installed this FishMe uh, application, not only I got a feed from the people from FishMe who they, their, their business is about detecting phishing campaigns, and they send into Curator a list of, and I'm going to, let me show you that, a list of artifacts or indicators of compromise. So if I go into Curator's admin tab and go into reference set, which is uh, just a, a name for uh, tables that Curator uses, and I'm going to uh, look in here for FishMe. And this is the information that every day FishMe populates into my system. I notice that part of this information that it sends to me has hashes. Very interesting. And there was a match between a hash seen by Curator and one being sent by FishMe. So definitely there's somebody that sent something malicious to be targeted. But how does Curator get hashes? Well. Hashes can be gotten from things like Sysmon, 
that in the Windows machine collect hashes from things like Carbon Black and but also from a component called QNI, which is the one that actually uh, work in this particular case, that basically allows Curator to, as the files are coming through the network, calculate the hashes of those files. And by the way, and more than 40 fields that are key that are part of the payload, not the logs, not the flows, but even going inside the payload and allows you to discover things that otherwise will be happening without you knowing about it. And also in that app exchange that I just showed you, there are integration with, uh, the, the integration goes beyond just getting rules and threat intelligence data into Curator. But you can actually go into any one of those IPs. And for example, I install here the Big Fix integration as well as the Carbon Black. And I can actually perform a search within Carbon Black without leaving Curator. I go straight into Carbon Black to understand what happened with this inside this particular machine. Or with, with Big Fix, I can see, you know, uh, what's inside this box, what, what is being patched on patch, what is it that uh, the files that changed in the last uh, 30 days or so, and the, the file hashes of those as well. So all that thread of great wealth of information is available to the SOC operator without leaving the curator console and that makes his job a lot easier. But there are there are even more features. For example, this offense in here, destination vulnerable to an SMB attack. Well, how does Curator get to know that? Well, Curator can be fed with the data from your vulnerability scanner and when it gets data from your IPS, uh, it, it connects the dots and say, well, the, the, the vulnerability scanner knows what is vulnerable but doesn't know what is under attack. The IPS is the opposite. It knows what is under attack but it doesn't know what is vulnerable. Curator, by getting the logs and flows from the IPS and by getting the vulnerability data, connects the dots and gets uh, rules like this one firing. In that app exchange there are also great applications like uh, the free UBA which allows you to, at a glance, look at the risk score of every individual. Uh, so Curator gets a feed from your Active Directory or LDAP. So it knows all the user IDs that belong, for example, to James William, and it collects all the risky things that James uh, performs and, 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 and gets a, an overall risk score. And you can actually put a threshold and say, when the risk score exceeds a certain number, please uh, fire an offense because I need to investigate that. So I can go into any, you know, I can go back in time. I see, you know, why, why is this guy became so risky at this particular time? So I can go at the peak of the risk and see what he was he doing at that particular time. So you see somebody's trying to guess his credential and it's coming from China, you know, different places. So you can get all that information with that, uh, with the UBA app. But one of the apps that I like the most is actually the Watson Advisor. So let me show you this particular offense, which consists only of just two events. I mean, something that doesn't seem to be too bad. I send it to Watson and say, well, Watson, is this really too bad? And look at all the things that Watson says. Uh, well, you know, all the, you know, they say, they say they give me the name of the campaign, you know. I want to see this. I don't want to read. I want to see it graphically. Whoa, look at that. So in gray here, is actually zoom around about here. What you see in gray is the flow of the actual traffic. So this is the IP address. The user is called Desert Falcon, and he went to this particular uh, URL and that and that I that has that IP, and so is this one. So nothing apparently too bad about it. But Watson is telling me, well, you know what? This information that is in blue is stuff that Curator has seen related to this particular IP address and URLs and, and this one as well that uh, Mr. Desert Falcon actually went through. And look at that. We get a wealth of information about things that might be related uh, to your that you want to look for and one thing that is actually interesting is that we know that there is a threat actor called ugly gorilla here that is actually 
uh, attacking your your company. That's uh, that's kind of interesting. But and, and you can actually get all this data and actually have it put in one of the tables that I mentioned before, those reference set, and and, and look for those things in more detail. But notice that it's actually very in something very interesting happening here. I'm going to zoom around here. And notice that Curator went back to my logs because I authorized Curator to do that. That's a feature you can enable. And find out that there are two more guys. This guy, let me actually zoom from with the tool, Jenny Davin. And what's the name of this other one? Ray Karen, who actually were attacked by this particular uh, malware and here's even the name the tsunami name of the actual malware in it imagine how much time uh, a, a very experienced SOC operator will need to put all these out curator gives you that in minutes